Hello everybody, we are going to do another sample problem today. This one is a thermo problem, specifically it's going to have a lot of stoichiometry in it. And my hope is that by the time we're done with this problem, you see that a thermo stoichiometry problem is no different than any stoichiometry problem. You just effectively treat the energy term as either a product or a reactant, depending on what reaction you have going on. I gave us three little questions to answer. Each of them we'll just tackle individually. Let's first come up and just look at the reaction we're dealing with. So you can see I have this boron species here reacting with oxygen, and we're producing this oxide plus water over here. I went ahead and just pre-calculated the molar masses of all these different species for us so that we don't need to do that during the video. And if you come over here, you see that we have the heat of reaction. That's the enthalpy change of the reaction. It's negative, which means it's exothermic. Remember, delta is always final minus initial. So here's a large initial value, small final value. This is one of these reaction coordinate diagrams where I could have my enthalpy over here. So small minus large gives negative if you want, and we will be doing this you can treat the energy released in this exothermic reaction as a product. So we will just come over here and put our 2035 kilojoules right at the end there. Certainly had it been endothermic we would have put it as a reactant. So just like any stoichiometry problem, and some of you have seen this before, I'm always trying to get from moles of one species to moles of another species. Or, in this case, we could have energy, maybe, is one of the things we're moving between. But the transition is always this stoichiometry conversion factor here. And so on any problem, you are always trying to get from something, maybe it's mass, for example. Maybe it's molarity. Maybe it's some volume from a gas law problem. You're always trying to do whatever you need to do to get to moles so that you can use this stoichiometry conversion factor and get to your other species. And once you do that, then maybe you're going to go over and you go back to mass of a particular species. Or maybe you go into volume, whatever your particular question is asking you. It really is energy that we are trying to go to for part A. But as I said, just treat energy as a particular product in this problem. And so we are in a situation where we are going to start from the mass. We need to go to moles. We need to use a stoichiometry conversion factor to get over to energy. So we are told that we are starting with 100 grams of water. Okay, there we are starting with our mass. We need to get to moles. So we're going to use the molar mass of water, which I know is 18.0 grams of H2O per one mole of H2O. And remember, I highly recommend that you actually take the time to write out the different species that you're dealing with so that you can keep track of it. This entire process is always just bookkeeping. It's just staying organized. So now I'm in moles of my species. And remember, I need to use my stoichiometry conversion factor. Well, here's the stoichiometry. Three moles of water give me this many kilojoules of energy. So I'm putting that in as my conversion. Being as detailed as I'm being about my labels, mole water, it helps me keep track of what needs to be in numerators and what needs to be in denominators. So there's the energy term. Now, look, I have moles water canceling with mole water, gram water canceling with gram water. I just need to execute this calculation, 100 divided by 18. There's a divide by 3 and then it times that 2,000 number. This ends up being 3770 kilojoules. I'm rounding, trying to keep track of my sig figs. And that is actually my final answer to part A. See if I can find a little place to write this here. 3770 kilojoules. This next one says how much energy would be released when reacting 2 grams of B2H6 with 10 grams of our oxygen. If you look at part A, you will notice that this is exactly the same question. It's going to have the same sort of idea behind it. But any time you are given two reactants and given specifically how much 
material you start with for both of the reactants, you need to immediately be thinking to yourself a limiting reagent problem. So one of these things is going to be limiting for me. In a situation like this, it's honestly probably easiest to just calculate for each of them how much energy you would generate, assuming the other one is in excess and then figure it out at the end. So here's what I mean by that. If I start with the B2H6, I will go this many grams of that species. Again, that's mass. First go to moles before I can use my stoichiometry conversion. Here's that number, grams of B2H6 per one mole of that species. And it appears that there's a one in front of that for my energy that I accidentally erased before. So one mole for two zero three five kilojoules. That would give me 147.1 kilojoules. And again, notice that that is assuming that I have enough oxygen that I would actually react all of that. Or what I can do is I can focus now on this oxygen species, assuming for just a moment that I have all of that that's going to react because the other species is in excess. 10 grams O2. Notice the three, the stoichiometry in front of that guy. Three mole. This is that stoichiometry conversion factor now. O2 is going to give me this many kilojoules. This is about 212 kilojoules. I never really did this before. Notice we have gram, I'm answering gram, mole, and mole going away. Down here, mole, O2, mole, gram, gram. So again, limiting reagent problem. At some point, you are going to use up all of your reactant, and that's as much reaction as is going to happen. And so it always ends up being the lesser of the two. So there's the amount I would actually get, because down here, I would really need more of that boron species in order to continue reacting the oxygen. And I'll take that down to three sig figs, and I'll just write here, one, four, seven kilojoules. So part B now is done. And part C, it's still just a stoichiometry problem, and again, I'm just trying to emphasize that you treat the energy term as just another species, because my starting information that I'm giving to you is 700 kilocal this time. So I'm giving you an energy, but notice we do need a unit conversion. If you recall, 4.18 joules is equal to one calorie, but certainly I could multiply both sides by kilo, and find that I still have the same numeric values there, even between kilojoule and kilocalorie. So first, let's convert this number. I have 700 kcal, but for every 1 kcal, I'm going to have 4.18 kilojoules. This is going to give 2926 kilojoules. I'm going to start with that over here to do the rest of the problem, though certainly that you could have done those two steps in the same chain here. So there's the amount of energy I have in the right units. Now I'm using the stoichiometry, which happens to be one to one for this one unit of energy that's over there. Again, the units are showing me where my numbers should lie as far as numerator or denominator are concerned. So this is that stoichiometry conversion. This is the equivalent of one unit of energy for one mole of this guy, B2H6. And now I am sitting there on moles of B2H6. So I just need to come up here and use this conversion again, paying attention to my units, letting them tell me numerator or denominator. One mole B2H6 for 27.67 grams B2H6. And in doing that calculation, I find 39.8 grams B2H6. Final answer for part C, and we're done with the problem. 
Ideally, I'd like you to think back to that visual I was trying to draw up at the beginning and see that stoichiometry problems can be very systematically approached as just a series of unit conversions. So hopefully those problems there made sense to you, and if they did, you should let your computer know.